what is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another Sales Hacker webinar. It's your boy Gaetano. You already know who it is. I'm here with Rob Jepson, the CEO of Xvoyant. And today we're going to be talking about curing common coaching. And we're going to teach you everything you need to know for you to coach like a pro. Now, there's a couple things that you need to know about today's webinar. Number one, we are recording this. So if you need to hop off for any reason whatsoever, you go to our YouTube channel, you're gonna get the recording there. You're also gonna get an email follow-up with the recording and you're gonna get Rob's deck. Uh, you could also hit up Rob on LinkedIn after if you feel like you immediately need the deck and you don't wanna wait, uh, just go, go to Rob Jepson on LinkedIn. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to shoot you over a copy of the deck. It's action-packed, I've seen it, I'm hype. It, there's so much gold in here. There, there's, there's just a wealth of knowledge for all sales leaders that I'm pretty sure almost everyone attending this webinar is going to want to deck. And um, it, it's, it's definitely something you don't want to miss. Now, um, Rob, uh, how are you doing today, sir? Welcome. I am fired up, Gaetano. Can't wait to be here. Thanks for having me. Hello, Sales Hacker Nation. And I'm ready to talk about fixing and curing common coaching because it is screwing up businesses everywhere, brother. Awesome, man. Awesome. Um, and I also want to I also want to let the uh, the audience know real quick that um, if you want to ask questions throughout uh, the webinar, that's totally cool. You can do so using the Q and A feature. Don't use the chat feature on the bottom because if you use the chat feature on the bottom, uh, you're just going to be sending me a personal DM. And unless you really want to talk to me, <laughs> you can do that. But I would recommend that you use the Q&A feature if you have something to say or if you have a question. Now, I also see that uh, someone has mentioned here that uh, the deck has not uh, – the, the, the deck has, has dropped from the screen share. So what I'm going to do is just pull it up on my oh. end, and uh, I'm going to share it from my side. So hang on one second while I do that, and we'll get rocking and rolling here, folks. All right, so I'm gonna enable screen share and we should be able to uh, hit this thing off here. All right, I see, actually, Rob, I see your deck back, so it looks good now. Um, am, I, am I driving, Katana? Uh, yeah, you're driving, you're driving. I think you got the deck back on. I think it dropped for a second, but. Oh. Um, actually, well, it looks what like- would it looks a, like What it, would a sales meeting be if you didn't have a challenge, right? <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it looks like the, the deck dropped again. So I'm just going to share my screen. It, it might be your internet uh, instability, Rob. It's, it, it's all good. So I'm just going to share it from my side and uh, we should be good to go. All right, I'm going to go into presentation mode and we should be rocking and rolling here. How's Sweet. that looking, guys? All right, so it looks like uh, I think we're good to go. All right. So, you're driving, man. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm driving. I'm in the driver's seat. Uh, so you just let me know when, when to move forward with stuff and we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen that way. Well, let's get to the next slide and we'll take this. Let's, let's, let's step on the gas and catch up. We're going to have a fun conversation and if you – you can see what we're going to hear to talk about. Five things. You, you all can read them. Uh, there's a coaching challenge that's in the world today. Uh, Got time. You had us. Uh, you had me write five part series on how do we get coaching right. We'll talk about that and what those things are. Every step of the way, we'll talk about tactics. At the very end, we'll say what to watch out for, and and then we're going to give them some free resources. So that's, that's what we're going to talk about. Anything you want to add there before we we dive in? 
Oh, this is great. I think um, these are the things that people really care about. You're, you know, you're setting the stage and then you're getting right to the actionable tactics, which is what people want. So um, there's a lot of meat and potatoes in this presentation. So I think we should just get right into it. Let's hit it. So the, the, we're going to start this thing. And Gaetano, you're the one who's seeing what's coming in from the group. Make sure you stop me if there's questions that come, because I'd love to make sure that we hit what they care about. We just did a study with Keenan. I love Keenan. Keenan did a great study on coaching. And um, what he found was there is a conundrum. I love this. You know, turn left, but keep right. If you pull the first build up, 48% of salespeople in the United States, if you just click that one time, it should, it should bring it up one. Hopefully, there we go. There we go. 48% say they don't get coached at all. Mm -hmm. Forget about if it's good or bad. I do not get coached. Now, let me tell you why it's so important. If you go to the next one, 83% of their leaders, the same leaders of those reps say, not only do I do it, but I'm freaking awesome at it. So I want to pause before we go there. Does that surprise you, Gaetano, as you look at that? Um, you know, it actually, it actually doesn't surprise me. Um, it's, it's the classic uh, break in the, in the communication loop, you know. Leaders think that they're, they're awesome. They think maybe uh, the one-on-ones that they're having with their reps is considered coaching. It's really not. And uh, there's no, typically with a lot of big companies, what happens is uh, you get into this cycle of having just regular one-to-ones with your reps and you get sidetracked. You start having personal life conversations. There's no action plan that drives things forward. And then before you know it, it's uh, leaders think that they're awesome at coaching. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there's a big difference between management and coaching, obviously, which we'll get into today. But I, I do think that this is fairly accurate and it, it doesn't really surprise me that much, to be honest with you. It's the third bullet point that really should just grab you for a second and not let you go. 86% yeah. of the time when a rep says, I do get good coaching, they hit goal. Yeah. So that's a big deal for us. So here's the, the net net to start this whole conversation. Whatever most managers are doing, it ain't coaching because we have to go to the rep's perspective. There are five specific things that will help us. But if you go to the next slide, let's talk about why this conundrum exists. Okay. The conundrum exists for a lot of reasons, and we'll talk about the why it exists. This is what happens if you get it right. You can expect all of these things. Production goes up, retention goes up, win rates go up. All those things go up in a big deal. Those are studies that I don't have to go back to. That's why we have so many freaking people on this webinar is they want these things, right, Gatano? Absolutely. These are the three, uh, these are the three little bits of gold that uh, you, you want to see as a result of coaching. And in fact, look at the middle one, retention. Right now, Glassdoor says 68% of salespeople are actively looking for their next job, and only 19% say, hey, I'm going to stay in this job for more than a year. This yeah. is why, I mean, production and win rates, last one, win rate. It's the fastest way to increase sales other than what raising prices is win rate. If you can have three of 10 more turn into hits instead of the two or three that you already have, it's amazing what it does. That's yeah. why we're going to have this conversation. Oh, I love it, man. And it, and it makes a lot of sense too. You know, salespeople, they don't want to feel ignored. They don't want to feel like they're, that their one-to-ones with their manager just becomes a metrics review. And, you know, it's, it's just like, why aren't the numbers the, what, what they're doing? And then you go into like maybe one or two little BS tactics that may work, may not work. And then you get back into the same old conversation the next week and it's the same thing. And then, you know, they're still not hitting their numbers. They're still not feeling good. And, and then ultimately it's like, all right, there's, there's a problem here somewhere. And that's why reps tend to look elsewhere when they just beat their head against the wall for so many weeks and months and, and quarters and, and there's no results. You got it. So let's talk about why the biggest reason this happens, I think. And if we go to it, it's this picture right here. I believe coaching is about transforming. And, and, and Gaetano, if the biggest problem that I see is we have a misunderstanding of, of why we coach. Too many people think coaching is going from something bad to something good. And so yeah. that if we're in a decent spot, we'll just leave it there. And it's not. And if you push the next button, you'll see a couple of things start to come up. I don't care if you're trying to fix sales or get more pipeline vitality or win rates or revenue per client or cycle time or whatever it is. It's not that we're going from something broken. You click it one more time, Gatano, you'll see that what we're doing is we're trying to intentionally improve wherever we are. And the whole mission for us as leaders should be, are we going from current state to future state? And that's what coaching is about, is not yep. fixing things that are broke. And then if it's broke, my one-on-one my one -on -one is we're going to high five and say, hey, keep it up. No, we're going to intentionally freaking improve. But that, that's what today's session is all about, G. Oh, I love it. I love it. And it's, it's like, you know, a perfect parallel with how the sales process actually works. 
when you're talking to a prospect, you're communicating the value that happens when you go from current state to future state after they implement your solution. And it's really, uh, coaching is, is the exact parallel to that. It's just internal. So should we dive in? Let's dive, man. Okay. Transforming. It's what's, what it comes down to if you're a sales leader is igniting. I love to look at this because a team should have like eight to 10 people on it. If you get much more than 10, you have too many people. It's hard to coach. If you have less than eight, you probably have excess capacity and you're going to be a pain in the ass. You're going to micromanage. And, um, and so you should ask yourself, everybody of the 600 and some people on this right now, do your one-on-one, do they ignite something? Do they have the people that are already on fire keep burning? Or the people that aren't, are we igniting something? That's the real lens to look through is are we igniting? Because if you look that way, I think that you'll instantly find ways to change your one-on-ones. Mm-hmm. And how do you know if you're igniting? So that's a really good one, brother. So the lens that I like to go to, Catano, for reps, we've all seen the reps that say, oh man, I have these great prospects I'm selling to. They'll do anything. They'll talk, they'll take your call. They'll go to the game. They'll fill the seat at the event. Uh, they'll let you have a ride along with the boss and tell you that, oh man, you're amazing. They do everything except for buy from you, right? Yeah. And the reason that that happens is you're not getting commitment from those buyers. If you can have conversations without commitment equals no change with a prospect, same thing with a, with a, with a, a one-on-one with a, rep, with a rep. If you have conversations without commitment to change, you're not igniting. You need to make sure that every one-on-one has conversation that includes commitment on what we're going to do different. And that's the only way you know if you're going to be igniting. And we're going to talk about the five things here in a second. If it's not collaborative, you're not igniting. You can't just dump a whole bunch of wood on the fire when it's just a little tiny spark or else you'll kill it. You've got to nurture this. You've got to make sure you're actively trying to make this turn into a raging flame that you can throw any wood on it and it's going to take it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, let's dive in, man. Let's dive. Okay. Five things. Here we go. You're going to see what they are. We're going to, we're going to show you the, the icons right now. I'm going to take you through five things. We're going to give you five takeaways for each one. Hopefully, there's going to be multiple tactics that you're going to like for each of these. And it starts with mindset and it finishes with closing the loop. Let's hit number one. Hit it, G. Let's hit it. Okay, number one, we have got to have the right mindset. Now, I want to bring these up one at a time. There are four levers that a sales leader can pull to have sales performance improve. Number one, just kind of stay with me as I go, Gaetano, is number one is the aptitude of the people you hire. My definition of this is their natural gifts, and you just look at yourself and say, would you rather have someone that's willing to talk to people or people that are afraid to have a conversation, which takes us to number two. If you can bring these up as we go, G, that'd be good. Yeah, let's do it. Number let's do it. two. Number two is the, just go for it, their level of motivation. My definition of, of this, willingness to do whatever it takes to win without cheating. Number three, skills. My definition of a skill is something you can achieve proficiency in in six months or less. I'm not saying becoming a subject matter expert. I'm saying proficient in six months or less. If it takes much more than six months, then it's something greater than a skill. And that takes me to the fourth one, role. My definition of this is, uh, my idea and understanding of why the company's got me here in the first place. And if you pull up those four, I'd love it, Gaetano, if the people that are on can hit on the chat and let you know which one, if you can only pull one of these levers, which one is the one that moves performance fastest? Hire better people, fire them up and have them be motivated, train them and give them better skills, or have more commonality on role. What do you think, G? Well, I, I could tell you what most I, I know what I think. I, I could tell you what almost – the majority, the large majority of people are going to say, and they're going to say skill and maybe even motivation. And you would be exactly what I see when I do this. And you're probably seeing the, the stuff coming through on the chat. And that's what 90% of the people say is it's either fire them up or train them better. Yeah. Now, both of those are important. Remember, all four of these things are required for ongoing success. Fair? Okay. Very fair. But if you fire it off, the one that drives success fastest is role perception. Yep. Chris Porter. You win, you get uh, rewards. Chris, Chris Porter got it right. Shout out to you, Chris Porter. Good job, man. Chris Porter, my man. Yeah. Okay. But, not, but what you're seeing is probably a lot of motivation and skill coming through, right? Yeah. Most people said motivation. Here's the thing. Motivation is usually not one that you want to artificially do because – the motivated are what comes to sales in the first place. Our yeah. job as leaders is to create environments where the motivated succeed. Yeah. And here's the other thing I found, Gaetano, and this is good for our listeners. Most salespeople tell me if I knew what to do, I'd already be doing it. 
Okay? I didn't show up to suck. And so when we try and motivate by having competitions and contests, it's artificial. And then when that turns off, so does that level of motivation. What we want to do is have a role that says, these are the activities, these are the skills, these are the cadences. When I do them, performance gets better. I get rewarded for it. I get fired up and want to do more. And that's how you fuel motivation. That's yeah. the way you fuel motivation. Yeah. Have you, ever then, had, have, have you ever had, a, have you ever had a, a rep or um, somebody on your team, maybe in this, in this current company, ex buoyant or, or a previous company that like they've come to the realization that they're just, they're good at sales, but they're in the wrong role. Like, you know, maybe, maybe, they're, maybe they're AE, they're not necessarily good at closing, but they're good at analytical stuff and they shift to ops. Like how, how do you identify that as a sales leader? Well, the easiest way to identify that is making sure you're having killer one-on-ones and you actually find out what they like doing. I mean, you can force people to do stuff. You, know, you can have it be my way or the highway. And you tell them to do stuff and they hate it, man. They do it begrudgingly. And, and you know, you can get people's mind. I mean, so you can get their, their body because you pay them. What you want is their heart and their mind by, by right. connecting and igniting, right? And if they hate what they do and they're like killing themselves, I'm thinking of my company. I'm thinking of other companies I work with. There are people that are the hardest workers, but they just never get there. But they love right. the company and they have other skills. And so that's a whole other conversation that gets coaching into another role. In fact, on my podcast, I have an episode with Haley Katzman that goes out uh, today. And she said her role over there is to be the revenue pipeline as well as the people pipeline because she brings them in as SDRs and then helps them grow into the places. Sometimes they want to stay there. Other times they want to be other places. She sees her job is to develop the people pipeline. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I like that. Uh, question from Eric Sutton real quick. Um, how, how do you actually define role perception? I just, I think That's a, a great good. question. I'm glad they asked it. So yeah. as leaders, we have to make it crystal clear, A, what their job is. So if you're an SDR, it's to deliver X number of, of, uh, of leads, so sales accepted leads or whatever it is. If you're a closer, okay. your job is to re- deliver this much revenue. I, but it's more than just that. The role is, what are the activities that you need to engage in or the yep. tools that you need to use? And that's why understanding of role, it drives how you spend your time, but it also drives what tools you use. And we do a lot of role audits when we start with companies. We say, hey, you know, you, your sales reps have identified 14 roles that they think are their job, uh, only two of which are tied to what the managers think. When you look at how your reps use their time, it tells you exactly what they think their role is. And that's an interesting thing to look at. That's awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you started with the metrics and KPIs, and then you got into the activity side of it, too, which I think is really important. Well, I think that the activity side is the most important because KPIs measure the impact that you've had with your activities, but your perception of your role will drive what you do, period, end of story. Period. So, I agree. So that's the, that's the first thing. Is, and so let's talk about that. Role yep. of the salesperson. This is a coaching seminar. So that means your leaders better adopt, say that my role is to coach. You know, if you look at how much time is spent actually coaching, it's very little, Caetano, very little. It's tiny. So the first thing on mindset is accept the role of coach and, and allocate time for it so you can be consistent. But here's the second. We've got to change our mindset of how we look at our reps. And I love this. Most leaders have a binary mindset where they say, I'm just going to say what percentage of my people hit goal and what didn't. This would be a chart that says 38% hit goal and 62 aren't. I have 38 that are good and 62 that aren't good. You know, the love group, the hate group, there they are, right? And that's the wrong way to look at it. If you click it, we want to move past that, that kind of. So this is why you have the 2080 rule, 20% of people doing 80% of the business, because we're not relevant to them. All we're saying is hit your number, figure out a way to get there. Instead, we could be relevant if we segment our team. And in the first ebook that we wrote together with Sales Hacker, we introduced the concept of segment your team. Now, this is the same team that's in that 3862. This is another team that's 38% hitting goal and 62% not of a lot of reps. And if you look at it, I can be relevant to the red by saying, how do I get them orange? I can be relevant to the orange saying, how do I get them yellow? I can be relevant to the yellow saying, how do I get them light green, light green, dark green, et cetera. That's the best way for you as a coach to say, how can I be my, uh, relevant? It's have the mindset of my mission and my job is to get every one of you guys to get to the next level. I want to pause. What do you think about that? Yeah, uh, that, that is what it's all about. I mean, the, the notion that you're, you just have binary, you know, good or bad, or even, even the, the, the classic, I have my A players, I have my B players, and I have my C players. Yeah, I think that sucks. 
if yeah how, you know how, how do you feel as a rep if you're wondering every day yeah I'm, I'm i think i'm a c player yeah i'm going into work i'm on the c i'm on the c team yep i gotta get to b and then maybe I'm a. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like woo. It's like, you know, it's like let's go, baby. Let's go, right? It's it's like it sucks. You know, it's a shitty feeling. Like you want to be able to. The good thing about it too is when you have the sales distribution of performance, like you break it up into more manageable chunks. So like if you're low core, you get to core. It's like not that far away. Yeah. You know, you That's shorten right. the distance to the next stage. So the question that I want to say, if there's one thing we take away, you can go to the next slide on this now, Gatana, because I think yeah. that we want to talk about this next level discussion. I, I want everyone to ask themselves this question. So look at this right here. This is that same picture. Pretend that this is someone uh, that, if you look at that little bit.ly link right there, bit.ly x1 coaching, you can go to that link, put in three things. This is 500 reps, 50% quota attainment, and a target quota of 650 per rep. Put it in and it will segment your team for you. It will tell you what your team probably looks like. Now here's what's cool about this, Kaitana. I wanted everyone to get a tactic on why would I want to do this. Here's the question I tell every sales effectiveness leader, and that means chief revenue officer down to frontline sales manager, enablement manager, ops, you're all in the world of sales effectiveness. What is your strategy to get every single member of your team 10% better? Because 10% better times every member of the team is big. I want to look at what the value would be. If you look at this impact right here on the sample that they would find if they did this, you're hitting your number. These people are 108% of goal, and they're making 597000 per rep on a quota of 650. Look at once, and let's see what the, what it's, what's it worth if the poor just got 10% better, G. If you get the poor just 10% better, you click it once, it should come up and it'll tell us. At the 10% yep. uh, improvement on the poor category is, drum roll, waiting, hopefully, uh, there it is. Check that out. It's worth yep. $2.8 million. $2.8 million. If you just get those guys to the low core. And look what it does to your revenue per rep. It increases your revenue per rep six grand. How important would that be to a company? Take it through the rest and just fill them out. You can see what the other categories are worth. And each category is worth progressively more at in increases of 10%. Hopefully we're, not, we're able to get those to come up because I want the group to see that if you start getting everyone on a journey of, hey, my mission as your leader is to help find ways for you to get, continue to increase uh, by at least 10%. If these are able to come up, what you'd see is if we get all of them in, the net increase for this team, if everyone just improved by 10%, is like 28 $29 million, if I remember correctly. It might, might be more. Looks like we're having a challenge, G. Uh, yeah, uh, PowerPoint has uh, frozen, but it'll come back in a second. I'm glad you're driving and not me. <laughs> it's all good. It's all so, good. So while you're waiting for it to come up, I mean, thoughts around, I mean, what I find, Gaetano, and hopefully our listeners are, most of them haven't dollarized what the value of a 10% improvement is. And seeing just what the stakes are for 10%, I still think it's the biggest question, the most important question to ask yourself is, what is my strategy to have an individual plan for every rep to get just 10% better? That's what it's all about, man. You want to have that 10% increase across the board, and it makes a big difference. Um, just, getting to, just getting back to that slide so we can move forward again. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll pick up the pace. and let's, I want them to be able to see it, but I gave them all the link, and while you're bringing it up, that time, I'll just, I'll just kind of keep rambling. If you guys go to that link and put in those three things, your reps, your win rate, your quota size, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. You'll be shocked how accurately it, it, it predicts what your distribution is. Go back to two in front of that, Gaetano. Uh, that's, that's before that. I have the, the before There it is. Perfect. That's perfect. We'll just do the before and after. If you put those in, you'll see what they're worth. Check out what it's worth. It's 45, it's, it's, it's an increase of $30 million if everyone increases by 10%. And look at that revenue per rep. It goes from 597 to 657 without hiring anybody new, G, without hiring anybody new. No new trainings, no new systems. It's, we have one-on-ones where we take every one of them on the journey, because you're right. If I'm told I'm a C player, then I feel like crap. But if I see that I'm in the low core, but I know I have a plan to get to the core, I'm going to go get that, right? I'm going to go get that. And it's not that much. You know, it's only 10% it's only increase in quota attainment 
And the retention cost savings and the net revenue lift is, is pretty self-explanatory. It just it, the numbers don't lie. So anyways, I give, I give giving everybody that link. My challenge is do that because if all you get from this is you figure out the answer to the 10% plan for everyone, you'll be better off. But that's number one. Let's pick up the pace. Let's get to number two. Let's Mindset, we coach, and we're going to help everybody get 10% better. Those are good takeaways, right? Number two, we have got to use data differently. Now, Catano, you've heard me and – uh, and Jocko talked at many sales hacker events about use of data. We've both done it a few times. There are three types of data, volume data, conversion data, productivity data. If you don't know what those things are, go read my or Jocko's work that's on sales hacker. You'll get it fast. Okay. Here's how we usually use it though. G it's always stack ranking. It's who made the most calls, who has the highest hold rate or, or this rate or, you know, SD, SA, SAL to, to close rate, okay? Yep. Uh, and then we look at who hit goal and who didn't. we got to stop yeah. just looking at the stack rank because it doesn't help anyone improve. Yeah, it's the classic, uh, you walk through any software company, SDR floor, and you see the classic dashboard with, the you know, this person in the lead, then this person, then that person, and... Anytime somebody scores a big deal, everyone claps. And then now that person rose in the stack rank and woohoo, it's great. But at the end of the day, it's like, how are the managers driving uh, behavior change across the board? Yeah. The real question that every one of those reps ask is famous 80 songs uh, for 500 Alex. What about me? Right. It's what about me? You know, how do you help me? Because the same thing. Man, you think I like being in the bottom third? Do you like thinking like you think I like being in the middle? No, I want to be there. I just don't know how. So we're going to suggest right now. Here's how you use data differently as a transformed coach. So conventional thinking. We already talked about the conventional mindset. This is the transformed use of data, and this looks small in here. And I apologize. We go back to the distribution curve, Gaetano, and now we say, you, "So Gaetano is my boss. I'm me. I'm in the poor category here. No, it looks like I'm low core." If the first question that we say you should ask in the one-on-one -on -one is, Jepson, you know that a uh, sales hacker wants you to get to core because that's goal. What do you want to hit yourself? And I would say, you know what, Gaetano, I know it's late in the year, but I still want to be high core. You should be able to find what's the destination that the rep wants. Yeah. And when I tell you I'm going to be high core this year, Gaetano says, yeah, it's about time. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Now, now um, I, I feel like most – managers, coaches, they have a tendency to start with conversion data to lead the conversation. Do you, do you think that it's right or wrong to do that? Because the way that I do it, um, I, I actually uh, manage a small team of SDRs here at uh, Nextiva. Um, we look at productivity first. So how would you, how would you yeah, guide that discussion? Productivity. So Volume data is the calls. Conversion data is your advance rates. Productivity is what's, what did you do or not do, okay? Yeah. By using this, this distribution, you start with productivity and you say, how good do you want to be? It's exactly what you said. Start it with how good do you want to be? And they say, hey, I know I'm here, but I want to get here. The reason you want to know that with what you're doing at Nextiva, Caetano, is then once you know what their goal for them, themselves is, we have a responsibility to make a map, a pathway to get there. Because it can't just be, well, work harder. I was on the phone with the head of sales for a company yesterday, uh, and this gentleman, really great guy, I asked him that question, and he laughed, and I said, what's your strategy to get him 10% better? And he's like, I tell him to work harder. <laughs> and um, we can't do that. We have to be able to say, here's a well-lit path to, in this case, what high core looks like. So if you click it, here's how we recommend doing it, Gaetano, to answer your question. We want to use the distribution curve as a lens, push it again. Because if we say, I don't want to be high core, instead of saying, work your way up the conversion and volume metric place, push it one more time, what you'll find is we can sort of say, we want to know how many activities the high core do. I don't really care what the core does anymore. I just want to know what does the high core do? What does the conversion rate, rate look like? So activities tell me the volume metrics. My skills tell me the conversion metrics. And ultimately, we want to center the conversation around productivity. And so it looks like you're having a problem with the PowerPoint again. Um, if we can get that baby to come through, what we want to say is we want to convert all of these volume metrics that should turn into target activities. Conversion metrics should turn into target competencies or skills. And productivity should end up with our target uh, success 
profile that we wanted for ourselves. That's what we want to do with data, Gaetano. I like that. And I apologize. Uh, PowerPoint has frozen again. Just going to reboot it real quick. Any questions coming through as we talk about that? <clears throat> well, one, one gentleman had a good point. <clears throat> he said, you know, with your distribution there, what kind of rep would say anything but star as to what they strive to be? I'll tell you. Who says? I'll tell you what the answer. Who says I just want to be core because that doesn't seem right, and I, I would agree with that. But I'm sure it goes deeper. Someone that's stuck in poor and would be stoked just to make goal. Someone that's just happy to make goal. If goal, if core is 100 percent, and maybe high core is 115 percent, and your stars. Here's what it is. Someone, maybe someone's not ready to make president's club, right? Yeah. That might be a, a goal that they're just not ready for. But if yeah. I got someone who's dragging. And I can give them a pathway to the goal. That's like oxygen to someone who's, who's suffocating. Gaetano. That's a great question. Yeah. And that's, that's a, why. That's a fair question. It's a great question. But we owe it to those reps to have them tell us. So if you go to the slide that you're bringing up right now, here's, here's how you do that. Um, I, I'm really glad they asked the question. So now I've got, this is actual, a real one. This is someone who's in the core and they're actually just tapping on goal right now. And you ask them, how good do you want to be? And you can see this person might say high core. Well, look at You should be able to say anything that you track in Salesforce or any activities. In this case, they do emails, demos, calls, meetings, and visiting with prospects. Those are their key activities. They can see what does the rep do, what does the top uh, activity doer do. But more important, the dashed line says, this is what it looks like if you want to be in the high core. And in this person's case, you're relying on email too much we got to get more stuff going with prospects. That's what we should be talking about. Yep. Because I use data as a lens instead of as just a stack rank. Hey, Rob, we have, a, um, we have a comment here from Chris Porter, and it's a very good one. I want to just point it out real quick. Um, he says that the key theme that he's picking up on from all this is to allow for ownership from the rep rather than us barking at them and telling them what to do and dictating the way that things should be. It's more, it's more about kind of just enabling them to uh, perform based on what the data is telling. Is, is that something you would agree with? I would totally agree with Chris. Chris, this okay. is the second time that we've had to showcase him on this webinar today. Um, you're right. I mean, as a manager, Gaetano, what we don't want to do is force feed people, right? We yeah. don't want to force feed. What we want to do is help people say, this is where I want to be. And then our mission as a leader is to help them get there. That's what makes them feel like I'm connected with the leader is once, just like a rep and a salesperson, I mean, a salesperson, a customer, we don't force feed our customers. This is what you have to do. What problem do you want to solve? We help you get there. Same exact thing for a coach. Find out where your rep wants to be, help them get there. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, next slide. So yeah, go to the next slide. Let's, let's keep moving because uh, of speed. I want to pick up. They, they'll have the chance to dig into these on their own and reach out to you or I after, but Let's, awesome. let's pick up a pace and get to number three. This is going to be a fun one, Gaetano. You know what happens here, okay? Yeah, let's let it roll, We've baby. got to be able to – we've got to prioritize, okay? So we found out that they want to – we found out that they want to be in the high core. Let's play a game. And it's actually the game that the video is not working. I can do a game, and you'll see it on here, where I can say if everyone picks a few numbers, we can identify with, with crazy accuracy uh, that 80% of the people – pick a certain number and we have a fun game where we say we should be so predictive that 80 percent of the time we can take them through activities and skills that get them to a land zone how do we do that though how do we prioritize with people what the right change so i know i want to be star i want to know i'll be high core what do i do first i've got to have a way to prioritize it and that comes down to process so let's let's jump right into it uh gotcha. i'll go to the next one just just get off of this because the time right, cool. um Go to the next slide. Yeah, it, it, uh, oh, uh, the next thing was the meat. This was the fun. This is the meat. What we want to be able to do is say we understand that our outcomes are driven 100% by process. We can't just clap our hands and get there. So we want to separate process from outcomes, and we want to have a world where we can say if outcomes are bad and process is bad, don't feel bad. You got what you deserve. If outcomes are bad and process is strong, we'll be patient. If outcomes are great, process is weak. You got lucky. It's unsustainable. Outcomes are great. Process is great. Not only did you earn it, but you're set up for more success. Now, everybody loves this idea. Let me show you exactly how you do this. Go to the next slide. 
Let me give you a couple of, of uh, pieces of data because we're in a data-driven in, in world in the modern sales environment. Here's Diana. She has a million-dollar goal. Her average deal size is 200000 and her cycle time is supposed to be about 90 days. If you look at the right, you'll see the uh, green box. This is what she's done. She's at $2.45 million. Her average deal size is that 200000 You see all the rest. Win rate, she has $4 million in the pipe on six deals, taking her 45 days to win instead of 90, and her pipeline's only 22 days old, so it's super fresh. Before I go any farther, Gaetano, this is a star by every category. How in the hell do you coach this person? You know, I, I've never had to – I've never worked with a star of this caliber, actually. No salesperson I've ever worked with has been this good. Okay. I have seen a company that has people this good. and he, So I'm gonna, the reason I picked this one, G, is if you can coach this person, you can coach anyone, right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Go to the next slide. You're going to see our, our distribution come through. And we're going to see that it says uh, deserve, lucky, patient, et cetera. And the very first thing that we'll see is she's at a million. She has a goal of a million dollars, but she's at 2.45, right? So she's either in the lucky or the earned category. We already know that. Um, but what we want to do now is start measuring process. So let's think for a second, G. I'm going to see how good you are at math. You ready, baby? Stay with me. With if she has a million-dollar goal and a 50% win rate, how many dollars should she have in the pipeline? You broke up. Can you say that one more time? If she has a million dollar goal and a 50% win rate, how many dollars should be in her pipeline? 500,000. Nope, you went the wrong way. She has a million dollar goal and a 50% win rate, it's times two, she needs a $2 million pipeline, okay? So okay. if she wins 50% of 2 million, she'll get her million dollars, right? Okay. You with me? Click that, and so you'll see that we'll put right here, the middle now becomes the $2 million. Hopefully it'll come up, I know we got a little delay. Let's Let's, Remember now, hopefully this will come up. Uh, do you remember what her pipeline is? You said her pipeline? Four million, right? Okay. Four million. So she, hope, so yeah, they'll, they'll get the slides. I, I know the slides well enough because this is a real story. She has four million on a target of two million. She's double the pipeline. She's way over in the earned category as it relates to dollars to the pipeline. Does that make sense? Did it freeze again, Catano? Yeah, the PowerPoint froze. Just going to reboot it real quick. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, um, I'm, I'm sorry, brother. Uh, it's okay. But just bring it up, not in power, uh, in maybe in presentation mode, because then it'll have all the builds. What I want everyone to see is she had double the dollars. She was half of the speed. Okay, 45 days. That would swing over to the positive side of the process. Her cycle time was fast. For finding in dollars was also fast. But while you're bringing it up, I won't ask you to remember because you're multitasking. For those that aren't multitasking, she only had six deals in the pipeline, right? If you divide that two million by her average deal size of 200,000, that would mean she would need 10 deals in order to be deal flow in a way that, that sets her up for sustainability. With her only having six, she has only 60% of the deals but double the dollars. Is it fair to say, Gaetano, that there might be some nuances that she's chasing deals that are double what she has done in the past? It's fair to, yes, it is fair to say that. So this is how you coach her. You're going to be doing giant deals whether you haven't done before. You may need to get more consensus. You may have to get more people involved early in the decision. You may have to get legal or other things happening earlier on. There's going to be a lot of nuances that we're going to want to deal coach to make sure that she doesn't treat it as though she's done all the other deals, and then all of a sudden the deal stalls, or worse, we don't keep our 50% win rate because a win rate on giant deals is more important because the losses hurt more. You with me? Yeah, sorry, brother. I'm just trying to restart this uh, PowerPoint here. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. I, I guess like while you're trying to restart it, if there's any other questions you want me to address, I can do that too while you're pulling it. I, I, Sorry that we're having so many challenges, bro. That's nah, it's all love, baby. It's all love. Uh, what I mean, speaking of win rates, I mean, fifty percent win rate is is pretty uh, pretty lofty. I mean, what are yeah? <laughs> what are some of the more uh, the more normalized win rates that you're? I target seeing? a third. I target okay. a third. That's what I what we see is. You, 
mid twenties to mid thirties is, is pretty normal. Um, mm-hmm. And what I also have found with win rates is you like to look at them as individual Gaetano. Yeah. Too many times we assume coaching is averages for everyone. And everyone's individual number is the only one that, ma- that matters because if it's an oh, average win rate and your personal one's different, then it just doesn't matter. And so what I've learned is people use Salesforce consistently for them. So if you always sandbag and you always have a ridiculously high win rate, fine. We can coach to that. If you always put stuff in way too early and your lo- win rate is always lower than maybe it ought to be because you put stuff in too early – as long as you're consistent, I really don't care. Yeah. Win rates to me are only meaningful as it applies to an individual, not as it applies to a company. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, my screen is totally frozen here, man. I am stuck in no man's land. So what I'm going to have to do is All just... Right, well then, uh, let me just do it. Let me just yeah. do me talk. Screw, screw this. I know what they are, so do you. And every single person on this web, uh, webinar will have an opportunity to get the slides and access to you or me to walk you through them, okay? All right, sounds good. So process. Let me, let me just tell you what... And what Rob, we've got, we've, got about, we've got about 15 minutes, FYI. Yep, I know. That's all we got to hustle, cool. bro. Right, we got to get through three things fast and we'll probably get through them faster now that we're not waiting for PowerPoint. Right. All right. Cool. Um, so number one, transform the mindset, go from binary to segmented. Number two, prioritize based on process. Here's the takeaway, Gaetano. If process is strong, success is inevitable. If process is weak, success is unsustainable. And so you need to separate it out. If you're in B2B sales, there are three categories that matter most. Be able to tell each rep how many dollars that person needs for their pipeline, not get away from the average. Well, in general, we need to be 3.2 X pipeline to quota. Because again, that's Goldilocks and the three bears. For some, it's too hot. For some, it's too too cold. And some, it's just right. You've got to individualize it. Dollars, deal flow, and cycle time. Those are the three things. If you get that individualized, it's easy to to prioritize. What do you do from there? So I'll pause. Any questions or comments on your mind about prioritizing based on process? Uh, no, I, I think it all makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Well, then let's go from, uh, from priority. So we've got the first one was, was mindset. Second one was we want to use data the right way. Third, after we use data the right way, we say, okay, what's the priority? Fourth, we have to be able to set goals in a transformed way. Most of the time, Gaetano, we don't set coaching goals as part of a one-on-one. We'll have conversations. So here's the takeaway. Your, your playbook ought to be based on a structure like this. Outcomes are fueled by very specific stages. Stages are fueled by very specific activities. Activities are fueled by very specific um, skills. Skills are fueled by resources that we deploy. And then finally, we know if it's all worked or not worked, if we have exit criteria, uh, or verifiers, so we know that something actually happened. Most companies that I work with, Gaetano, they don't have that structure like that. And if you can structure it like that, then all of a sudden you can now say 100% of my coaching goals should be around those key activities that I need to do more of or do differently, or having them have a greater impact when I do do them, i.e. conversion metrics. And I want to have conversion metrics be tied to skills. And if I can have every single part of my volume, conversion, and productivity metrics be built on top of key activities and required skills, it's pretty easy for me to now break it down and say, oh, I don't have enough of these volume metrics to hit my uh, high core land zone. We'll set a goal around whatever those key activities are. Or if the activities are in the right spot that I should be in the high core, Then we say, oh, it's got to be a skill. Let's look at the skills that are tied to our conversion metrics and let's set goals around making sure that we're using resources differently or taking some courses. If you do that and you leave every single one-on-one with an activity and or a skill goal that they're working on, that's how you start to ignite. Because they're chasing something, they leave saying, I know for sure how I'm going to get there. That's how you do it. That's number four. I'm sorry that I'm rambling. No, no, this is great. I mean, it makes perfect sense. You know, you're not just kind of going into a blind, you're breaking everything down by segment almost, and you're focusing on a niche area to improve. That takes us to number five. Okay. In fact, I should go back on number four, number four, and you, you, you shared this on LinkedIn yesterday. 
in those goals, when you know what those goals are, the number one way to turn goals into commitment, and this was my takeaway on this one, Gaetano, and this was going to be a fun one, but it's in the slides. Yeah. There are only four things. If you are not familiar with the sales equation, learn the sales equation. Okay. New opportunities multiplied by average revenue per customer multiplied by win rate divided by length of sales cycle. Make the top side as big as you can, the bottom side as small as you can. If you get 10% better at each of those, 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 divided by 0.9, the math is interesting. You'll grow by 48%. Here's what we've wow. learned. Dollarizing the impact of change. So I'm going to change this activity. Why? Because I want more opportunities. I'm going to change the skill. Why? Because I want a different win rate. You with me? If you can have every coaching conversation go back to the sales equation, you can dollarize it. And Gaetano would say, Jepson, do you realize that if you did that, you'll grow by 38%? Screw this 10%. You'll grow by 38%. And that's worth X million dollars to you. Yep. That's how you get people to buy it. That's, you asked a question earlier on, G, how do you ignite? That is how you freaking ignite, brother. That's awesome. Okay, that takes us to the last one. You've got to close the loop. Too many times we have a coaching session and we just meet again later. The reason you set goals is so you can follow up and close the loop and say, did you do that? Here's what we've learned. If you measure the goals that people set and then do they hit them or do they not hit them, the only person that has to say yes to a coaching goal structured the right way is the rep, Gaetano. We never want a coaching goal to be close this deal because that's dependent on a customer saying yes. If we do our coaching goals right, our process will get strong and ultimately success will be inevitable. Coaching goals, the only person that should ever say yes is the rep. So set goals and close the loop and then track. Do these people, do they hit 10 out of 10 goals or do they hit three out of 10 goals? Because if I have someone who has bad outcomes, bad process, and by the way, they don't want to change, that ain't a good thing. But if I have someone who has bad outcomes, bad process, and I'm trying because I'm getting seven, eight of my coaching goals, then we look at those people differently. Is that fair to say? Very fair. And most companies that I work with, when we come in and we help build coaching culture, Gatano, the biggest missing piece, all of these five things, they need to transform how they look at role. They have to transform how they look at data. They have to transform how they prioritize. They have to for sure transform how they set coaching goals. But the biggest one that they never have thought of before is what does it do for me as a leader if I actually track coachability based on do they hit coaching goals or not? Because here's the hardest thing that we have to do. Dr. You lead a team right now. How do you spend your cycles with your people? Everyone's entitled to one-on-ones, but how you spend your discretionary time, how do you choose how to use that? And that's a legit different. question to you. How do you, choose, how do you choose how to use that? Uh, it's, it's really dictated by the numbers. So if, uh, like you said, we try to break it down by activities and, and results and try to go from there. Here's what I would propose. This will be a different way of thinking. If you understand who responds best to coaching and who has the highest co coachability scores, my suggestion to you would be maximize your time with those that want coaching. So if I have people that are not hitting their goal but really respond well to coaching, give them as much as you can. If I have people that are hitting their goal and they still love and respond well to coaching, give it to them too. If I have people that aren't hitting their goal and they don't respond to coaching, all they get from you is a one-on-one, -on -one, and if they don't fix it, they're out. Maximize your time with those that respond to coaching. So those are the five things, man, is start with uh, – sorry, we're on the end. I know we're, 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 we're coming down, and this has been an interesting one. I want to give them the five to, to kind of wrap this up with. Start with, number one, uh, do we have the right mindset? Number two, how do we use data? Number three, after we understand where they want to be and what data will get them there, prioritize in a way they get excited about it. Number four, set goals they can commit to by using the sales question. And number five, make sure that you close the loop every time and that you as a leader reward those that respond to coaching with more of your time. If you do that, what you'll find is coaching becomes this thing that people run to and they're excited about. And if you're not getting that time with the leader, it actually means that you got bigger problems. And if you do those things, Gaetano, there's five things that happen. So if you get five, you get five. Number one, productivity will go up and it'll go up fast. Number two, what you'll find is your percentage of people hitting goal go up significantly. 
Number three, your CRM utilization like, like Salesforce. Our experience is it doubles. We get like a 95% improvement in that. Number four, we see retention go up by north of 20%. And ultimately, we see win rates going up by 25 to 30% all the time if you get coaching right with this structure. So I, I hope that that was good. Do, do we have questions? That we have? Other, we know we have only a few minutes left, Catano, and then, and then we're done. Are there any burning questions that, the, that we should address on, on this five-step approach and these five things you get? Uh, no, I, 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 think it's, I think it's really awesome. I mean, you're breaking it down by all these results that come as a result of coaching. I think people kind of look at coaching in a vacuum still, too, sometimes. Like, they think it's just like, hey, this is a metrics review, and we'll, we'll give you just, like, one or two tactics to maybe get, get closer to hitting your number, but there's never really an action plan uh, that comes along with it. So I think this is a really good um, way to think about it, not so – not so one-sided, not so bottom, bottom funnel driven, you know, we have to hit our numbers or we don't. And it all comes back to what is that roadway to 10% lift with everyone, get your 10%, then retarget, get 10% more. You break it into chunks like that. People don't feel overwhelmed. They for sure don't feel micromanaged, but most of all, what they feel is they feel ignite, this ignite, igniting going on. So we've got a bunch of, of resources. You see them there. Uh, we've got all the stuff on Sales Hacker. Uh, we have a coaching assessment that they can get to, and they can answer some questions and, and see where they're strong and weak and which parts they should change. And, and I would encourage them to go to that, that last one, that excellent coaching bit.ly link. Find out what 10% is worth. If you're like most people I've talked to, you have no clue what the value of 10% is. And that's a, that's a game changer. When you start with that, it changes how you look at coaching. Agreed. That's um, a, a, a very – um, uh, attainable thing to do. I think uh, if you if you look at it that way, it's it's a lot easier to attain rather than yeah, we just have to crush quota. Well, for the listeners that are still there, Gaetano, they'll get the deck. And if I can ever be helpful, if they just want to talk coaching, I'm happy to do it. You know, I, it's my idea of dirty talk, man. I, I, this is my idea of fun. And there's nothing I'm more passionate about than helping leaders make how they lead be their most defensible competitive advantage. And the great thing that I hope they got from today is it's not a big investment. Uh, it's not this insurmountable challenge. It's something that if you break it into these chunks and you take the transformed mindset and et cetera, instead of the conventional, what you'll find is how you lead becomes your most defensible competitive advantage and your people, you'll become legendary to them. They'll, they'll stay longer. They'll be more successful. And as they go into their career, you're that person that transformed them. But my challenge to everyone, Gaetano, is take the challenge to transform your team and you'll be legendary as a result. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with that. You know, there's, there's, everyone says they always say that one, that one manager, that one sales manager, that one marketing manager that made a real difference in their career and their life. Every leader should strive to be that person to every rep. Amen. That's right, brother. All right. Well, thank you. Anything uh, else? You? Uh, someone, someone, Amber laughed when I said, yeah, crush quota. Woo. Like that's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a thing you see a lot on, on LinkedIn and everyone talks about it. You got to crush quota and it sounds cool and it's great. And it's very machismo, but at the end of the day, there's a more scientific uh, process to getting results. And it's not just about crushing quota. It's about taking small steps to elevating into the next performance tier. And it's not just about ABC player and hitting quota or not. Um, there's, it's all about endless, exactly. Amber just said it, uh, it's all about growth. So as a sales leader, you should be enabling your reps to, to, to continuously grow, you know, even if it's a step at a time, a day by day, week by week, that's what it's all about. That's the best way to wrap it up. So it, it, take the chance, look at it. I, I think what you'll find is not only will we as leaders find this approach really fulfilling, 
your reps are going to tell you thanks. I'm telling yeah. you, they're going to tell you thanks. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Amber. We were just getting some praise from, from Amber. She said it was a great presentation. We we're glad you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you all uh, to the Sales Hacker audience. Hopefully you take this and ignite your team, make your one-to-ones matter. And if, of course, you have any questions, uh, you, hit, you can hit up Rob. Rob, tell them all the places they can find you. Yeah, find me on LinkedIn. I spend a lot of content on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm there. Uh, I'm on Twitter, et cetera. But, but we also have the Sales Leadership Podcast. They may like this, just because we interview some of the most successful leaders in the world. Uh, all we do is break down tactics around coaching and tactics around leading people. Uh, but, but LinkedIn and the podcast are the best places to find me, bro. Awesome. Yeah, definitely and check out Of course, hit xpoint.com. Xpoint.com for content. You can find plenty of Rob's content on saleshacker.com as well. Definitely subscribe to the Sales Leadership Podcast. Eric and thank you very much. Eric, Eric uh, sent us a shout out. Chris Porter, thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Also sent us a shout out. Um, and uh, yeah, you, uh, as always, you're welcome, Chris. Thank you. And uh, hit up Rob Jepson on LinkedIn. Of course, you guys can find me there as well. And uh, we're sorry for the the technical problems that we had earlier on, but we got through it and uh, it was a very valuable and meaningful presentation. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.